What's up, everybody? My name is Kason, and welcome in to week number six of the IBL. And we are here, the coach of the Oregon Golducks facing off against Padel, the coach of the Glasgow Gliscors. And this is going to be a hell of a fight. Padel is a phenomenal fighter. She is a very good battler, and her team is cracked. Uh, honestly, we are very close together in the standings right now, both three and two, plus nine to plus eight differentials. So basically only one kill separating us right now. So ultimately, this battle should be a good one. Taking a look at her team on the other side, though, there are a ton of threats that we really need to be worried about to try and claim a win this week. First and foremost, the Qian Pao, 135 base speed. If you guys don't know what this thing is, its ability mitigates how much defense the opposing Pokemon has. It cuts it by 25%. Not only that, it has an insane attack value. It has multiple priority moves with Sucker Punch at Ice Shard, Ice Dark typing, which is really good offensively, especially into two of our Ghost Mons with Dragapult and Zoroark. Honestly, this is uh, enemy number one for sure. Chan Pao is an absolute monster. I legitimately think it's probably the best Pokemon in Draft League. If Dragapult isn't, it's Chian Pao. And honestly, the thing about Chian Pao is it matches really well into Dragapult, so that is definitely concern number one. Cycle of Zar is a very fast Mon, can rapid spin, uh, can clear hazards really, really well, and honestly can launch off a surprise Draco Meteor or something like that into our Dragapult if we are not care careful. The Delphox I don't think is going to show up this week, but 104 base speed with a good special attack stat, this could show up this week. The Sandy Shocks is a Pokemon I think is actually very likely to show up this week. Could be a booster energy set to give it more speed. It can also go for hazards, it can go for screens, it can do a lot of different things, and offensively is very scary into some of our Pokemon, especially something like the Iron Treads. With that electric ground typing, it covers a lot of bases against our team. The Pheasantipity is an interesting Pokemon. This is one of those uh, Pokemon that is pretty new to the game. It has the ability Toxic Chain, which basically means every time you hit anyone with an attack, and it doesn't even have to be a contact move, there's a 30% chance of poisoning that Pokemon. Annihilate is very, very scary because it has the Defiant ability. Because of that, Intimidate on Incineroar is not nearly as good as it normally would be. The only thing going for us is that we have two very fast Ghost-type Pokemon, and it might scare her away from bringing the Annihilate all together. I know her favorite Mon in the game is the Corviknight. I expect to see it. It's a very good defensive wall, can roost, can pivot. It can be very, very difficult to get through, especially for our physical attackers. The Arboliva is very specially bulky, huge special attack stat, can even do things like Strength Sap, honestly is very threatening. Mudsdale is a Pokemon that I can easily see showing up because it has that stamina ability, ultimately can get very physically tanky over the course of the battle, and I don't think Slowking is going to show up, but with the Regenerator ability and also the ability to set a Trick Room, I could see it potentially being an option. So looking at what we are bringing this week, we are starting things off with Mage and X, our Iron Treads. We are rocking the Air Balloon item. This is so that we cannot get hit by a ground attack until we are hit by a different attack. With the Mudsdale on the other side and the Sandy Shocks, there are multiple strong ground types that can threaten our Iron Treads, and ultimately I think the Air Balloon can really help out with that. With 92 into speed, 252 into attack, with an adamant nature at 164 in HP, this thing is here to hit hard. It can rapid spin to speed itself up and to also get rid of hazards. It can also set its own hazards with Stealth Rock and Earthquake and Iron Head for coverage. The second mine we're bringing this week is the Duck. It's Quackaval, aka Kayuma. We are rocking the Choice Scarf item this week with 271 total speed. We are running a Jolly Nature with 252 into attack and just a little bit of bulk. Aqua Step, Wave Crash, Close Combat, and U-Turn are the moves we are using. We are using U-Turn to pivot out. Um, we don't want to run basically three water moves. U-Turn can hit certain Pokemon harder than fl uh, Flip Turn can, so that is the reason that I'm bringing that move this week. Aqua Step is always really good for sweeping, so especially with Choice Scarf, if we get that Aqua Step going and try and speed things up, that can really work. Close Combat is also very effective for just sweeping at the end of the game. However, there's one move we are bringing this week that I have not brought before, and that is Wave Crash. The reason for this is because of Wave Crash being one 120 base power compared to the 80 base power that Aqua Step is. This is basically the only way that I can guarantee to hit KO the Mudsdale on the other side. If I do it with Aqua Step, it is not a guarantee. Next Mon though is another one that I love to bring. Guesswork, Zoroark, Kasuian with 208 into the speed, Timid Nature, 252 into special attack. We are running Focus Sash again. We ran it last week against Rose and I think it worked really, really well. And this week we are doing something somewhat similar. We are running Nasty Plot to try and get that plus two 
special attack boost. We're running Will-O-Wisp in case we need to burn any opposing Pokemon to try and mitigate how much physical damage they can do. We're running Shadow Ball because Ghost is just very good offensively and it is a stab move. And we are running Flamethrower very specifically for the Chien Pao. My hope in this set is that if we get Zoroark to plus two, we are going to hopefully kill something. She brings in the Chien Pao, thinking that the Chien Pao can just one-shot our Zoroark and goes for maybe a Throat Chop or something like that. We get basically one hit KO'd down to our Focus Sash, and with plus two, Flamethrower should always one hit, one hit KO that Chien Pao. So ultimately, Flamethrower is really just there for that. It can also hit Corviknight a little harder, so it's nice there too, but ultimately, it is there for the Chien Pao. Chien Pao is literally so damn scary for my team. I need to come up with many ways to try and remove that thing. And one of the other ways to try and mitigate that thing is this Umbreon with max physical defense, 252 into defense, 252 into HP. I have the Choppleberry to mitigate how much super effective fighting type attacks do to our Umbreon. If that Chien Pao comes, it's very likely to run the move Sacred Sword into our Umbreon. If it does that, we can hit it back with a foul play, and even though it is a resisted uh, amount of damage because it's a dark type, it's based off of the opposing Pokemon's attack stat, and Chien Pao's attack stat is so ridiculously high, this actually will still hit it pretty hard. We have Roar here because we need to make sure to be able to punt something out if it is setting up in front of us, especially something like a Corviknight that could go for bulk ups or iron defenses. Roar is here ultimately to get rid of that. Moonlight is here to heal ourselves back up and keep ourselves fully healthy. And Toxic is here for pretty much everything, not named Pheasantipity or Corviknight, so that we can poison it and slowly chip them down. And you know I'm still bringing Mr. Aloha the Incineroar. I said earlier because of that Annihilate that Defiant is not... Uh, that Defiant is really scary and that Intimidate is not nearly as valuable as normal. However, this week we are actually running Blaze. Now, I'm not entirely sure who I'm going to disguise Zoroark as. Uh, I don't think I'm going to disguise it as the Incineroar. My hope is that if I bring out Incineroar with Blaze, the Intimidate ability is not going to go off. And Padel, because she is a good player, is probably going to assume that that is Zoroark, not Incineroar, because the Intimidate doesn't show up. She's going to hopefully think that, and maybe it'll allow me to get a free hit that I normally wouldn't get in that opportunity. We're running 252 in HP, 252 into attack with an adamant nature. So this is not as bulky as we can get. It's still quite bulky, but we are supposed to hit things very, very hard with this set. We're also running the choice band item, and this is honestly just to catch something off. Off guard. Flare Blitz will easily knock out the Chien Pao. I believe we can still two hit KO the Corviknight on the other side. Brick Break is phenomenal for breaking screens and also does one hit KO the Chien Pao. Knock Off is great to remove items and honestly U-turn for momentum is always useful. And last but not least is our get out of jail free card. It is Greatestness aka the Iron Thorns. Obviously rocking the booster energy item to increase its attack stat when it comes out on the field. We're running an Adamant Nature 184 into speed with Terra Fairy this week. Now, honestly, Padel's team is insanely weak to fairy Pokemon. I don't actually have a fairy on the team, but I do have a Terra Fairy Iron Thorn, so I'm hoping that he can put into work into her team here. So this is one thing I want to note real quick. With this nature, I'm running Adamant instead of Jolly. Now, this has a pro and it has a con to it, uh, aside from just the base speed stats here. Because I'm running an Adamant nature and not a Jolly nature, I am not going to be fast enough to outspeed, I think it's the top two Pokemon basically on her team if I get one single Dragon Dance off. However, what it does do is it allows me to have enough attack that if I get to my plus one uh, and do Thunder Punch, I should be able to KO the Corviknight. Uh, no questions asked. If I don't do this, I have to either run Super Cell Slam, which has a chance to give myself recoil, or Wild Charge, which also gives myself recoil. I really don't want to be taking any extra chips, so I think it's the Cyclozar. I will not be outspeeding because of this investment. I would have if I went Jolly, uh, but honestly, I didn't think Cyclozar was enough of a problem that I had to basically switch it. I figured with the Terra Fairy, I could always try and just get a second Dragon Stance up, and that would ultimately take care of that situation. For the moves this week, we're running only two attacking moves, and that is Fairy Terra Blast and Electric Thunder Punch. This essentially covers her entire team top to bottom. We should be able to hit everything at least neutrally, if not super effectively. Running Dragon Dance, because honestly, this move is just absolutely broken on Iron Thorns. And the last move is Substitute. And now the reason I'm running Substitute this week is because I think she could very easily run the Arbaliva on the other side to try and shut this thing down. Arbaliva gets a move called Strength Sap, which is incredibly annoying. And what it does is Strength Sap 
drops the attack stat of the opposing Pokemon by one and heals itself back up based on how much attack that Pokemon has. So because our Iron Thorns has a roided out attack stat, our Beliva is going to heal to full if she uses that Strength Sap on us. So not only is she going to heal back to full, she will lower our attack by one, and she can get so physically bulky that I literally can't break through her with the Iron Thorns. However, that is where Substitute comes in. Even though our Beliva is very bulky and can do that Strength Sap, we are going to be faster than the our Beliva. If we click Substitute, Strength Sap will not go through that. We buy ourselves an extra turn to get an extra Dragon Dance off, and now all of a sudden we can get through that our Beliva no problem whatsoever. So ultimately, guys, this is the team that I'm bringing this week against Badal. I know she is a phenomenal player and we are very close in the standings, so it should be a good one. But now let's head into the battle. An opposing trainer has been found. So we are here, guys. We're going to go up against Faye, aka Padel. Uh, and she's the coach of the Glasgow Gliscorers, or Gliscorers, however you say it. She did not bring the Annihilate. So there's no Cyclozar, no Arbeliva. I'm actually really surprised. The Mudsdale must be the answer to the Iron Thorns then, I'm guessing. I thought for sure she would bring either Mudsdale or Arboliva, but I thought there was a good chance that she'd bring both. Both can be Terra Captains though, which are tricky. So she brought two Terra Captains, the Delphox and the Mudsdale. Guesswork looks really good here. I don't want to lead it, I don't think, but Guesswork looks really good if I can get a nasty plot because she doesn't have either of the normal types here, which means Shadow Ball can hit everything. There's no immunity. I think I want to lead Machen. I think Sandy Shocks is probably her lead. And with the Air Balloon, we should basically be immune to both attacks it could go for. I think there's a decent chance it's a Sandy Shocks lead. Could go double hazards. Could go double hazards with Ground and Electric Stab. And basically, we wouldn't be able to take any damage. I want to switch this real quick, though, because I think I want Zoroark as Meeple instead of Quackleball. I was originally thinking I wanted to do Disguise as... Quackleball, but I think I want to disguise as Meeple here instead because I'm not leading the Quackleball. One of the reasons I ran Choice Scarf on Quackleball was to dis was to make her think that it was the Zoroark if I let it with the Choice Scarf U-turn. But honestly, it probably would have done so much damage she probably wouldn't fall for it. So anyway, good luck to Padel. She's a really good player, or Faye. I don't know which one I'll, I'll call her throughout the battle, but uh, hopefully this is a good one. It's the Mudsdale lead. So this is a Stealth Rocker. Um... So we're floating with the air balloon. Obviously, she's going to see that. So she can't earthquake turn one. So this thing could body press us. But I kind of just want to get stealth rocks up because I think there's a decent chance that she just stealth rocks. Because I don't think there's anything else I really want to switch into. I could predict the body press and switch into guesswork. But there's a chance that she might just think this is guesswork anyway. So I don't know if that's really worth it. So I think I'm just going to go for hazards and see what she goes for. We're faster, obviously. If it's a body press, we're gonna take a good chunk of damage, but at least we have hazards up, and this thing can't remove them. Goes for lash out, okay. So that's just to pop the balloon, I think. So the balloon is gone, which means she can earthquake freely, so I don't really wanna stay in anymore. Meeple would take this wall, but I think I need to, no, I, I said before, I need to keep this thing around. I need to keep Meeple around, because if Chan Pao gets out of control, I need to be able to live one hit and roar it out. But honestly, I think Kayuma is not expendable, but like a decent just switch here to just do a bunch of damage. If it does go for Earthquake, we'll live it at least and can hit back with like an Aqua Step or a Wave Crash. I think there's a decent chance she just clicks Stealth Rock here anyway, now that she has the balloon popped because she probably expects us to switch. But if she does go for an Earthquake, we'll live and at least we can hit something back. I don't think she's going to switch out because we don't really threaten that hard. So we switch out. Does she go for Stealth Rock or does she go for EQ? I think it's probably one of those two. She could go for Iron Defense too, actually, which would be a bit of a problem. She goes for EQ. Okay, that's fine. That does a lot of damage. Is that Choice Band or is that just natural? Oh, what am I talking about? It's definitely not Choice Band. She already clicked Lash Out. Does that tell me anything though? It doesn't really tell me anything for what item it could be. It's probably just like Lefty's or Rocky Helmet. So do I want to Wave Crash or U-Turn here? All right, guys, just to let you know, we actually just disconnected mid-fight. Thank God it happened like two turns in. So we are just now getting back to the point of where we were before. So we're going to take this EQ. Um, should do a good chunk of damage. Does not crit. I think that actually did less than last time. That might be a little lucky for us. But I think I'm just going to Wave Crash um, because it's just going to do a lot of damage. The thing is, like, neither one of these hits kill. And if it just Earthquakes again... Um, I want to basically just do as much damage to this thing as possible. I want to basically set it up if it stays in so that we can just revenge kill it with Zoroark, is my thought. And if it does switch, it does not switch. Okay, so we're probably going to die here. Unless it goes for Stealth Rock, that's really good damage. 
It does get the plus one defense boost, but Zoroark should be able to come in. I'm hoping to see Stealth Rock. If we could just take a kill, but we don't. That's fine. Mudsdale is a, an absolute monster. Kayum is going to go down right away, which is a bit unfortunate, obviously. Um, but we have rocks up, and she does not. And she does reveal the leftovers, which is good. This thing is pretty chunked, where a Shadow Ball should kill. So I think I just want to go Guesswork here. So we go Guesswork. We're going to be disguised as the Umbreon. I'm curious to see what she goes for here. I could see her thinking that this Umbreon's not a threat and just stealth rocking. But there's also a chance it goes for a body press because we are the Umbreon. I kind of want to Will-O-Wisp because of, to predict a switch, but I think Nasty Plot is probably a freer play. If it pops our Sash, it kind of sucks because Qian Pao could come in revenge. But if we Nasty Plot, we're going to kill something on the next turn, guaranteed. If we Nasty Plot here, we guaranteed kill something in the next turn. I know it's greedy, but I think I kind of want to go for a Nasty Plot. If this thing EQs again, that's rough. But I think it's got a chance... So we're faster. Obviously, we're going to reveal here that we're Zoroark. She's going to know this now. I'm hoping to see hazards. It is stealth. Let's go, dude. That's beautiful. So this is perfect. So she gets hazards up. We can clear these later with iron treads. Um, gets the leftovers recovery. That's not going to matter because plus two shadow ball definitely kills. Um, so we should just be able to click shadow ball here, claim a kill. And the thing is, if she stays in and we kill, Chien Pao probably switches in. With our Focus Sash, we should hopefully be able to kill that thing too. If we can somehow do that, that would put us in an amazing position. Honestly, there's a real world where that where that nasty plot play did not work out whatsoever, but I'm really glad that that worked. If she just, um, I thought there was a decent chance if she attacked, she just would have went for like body press or something. So the Shadow Ball is going to claim a kill, so it's one to one here. So our work's going to get on the board. The muscle goes down. We're sitting at plus two. We still have our sash intact, which is huge because we were able to switch in before hazards went up. So I want to see Qian Pao. That would be the best case scenario. I would love to see that. The Shiv. That has to be Qian Pao. I've, I've watched her videos. I know that's Qian Pao. Okay. Unless... Actually, it doesn't matter if it's Focus Sash because because uh, Stealth Rock takes Chip. I just Flamethrower here. And if this thing attacks me, this thing is dead. Please tell me this thing tries to kill me. This, oh, this would be amazing. Oh, let's go, dude. Let's go. Crunch is going to proc Focus Sash. This Flamethrower is going to pop off plus two. Unless it is a Fire Resist Berry, there's just no way. I'd be stunned if she if she, if she brought that tech. That would be crazy. But it's going to come off. This should be a kill. Oh, baby. This is huge. Chan Pao is literally the biggest threat on the enemy team. This was the thing I was most worried about all week. Um, it is now a two to one favor for us. Zoroark outspeeds everything unless it's Scarf. And we are plus two. She has absolutely no priority that can hit us other than Qian Pao, which is now dead. Because the only priority attack she has other than Qian Pao are either fighting or normal type. So she goes Delphox here. Um, I could see this thing being Scarf, but we just kind of have to Shadow Ball here anyway. Because what am I going to do with this thing, right? Stealth Rock is up. We're at one HP. We're plus two. If this kills us with Choice Scarf, then it's locked into something. So I just have to Shadow Ball and hope it's not Scarf. But the fact that she's bringing this thing in tells me it probably is Choice Scarf. This is a fantastic start, though. Honestly, turn one and turn two did not go great for us. That Mudsdill putting in the work, popping the balloon and taking out Kayuma was rough. But Zoroark really swinging things here. She's going to Terra. Okay. Um, Interesting. So, okay, Terra Fairy. Terra Fairy. I'm trying to think. Because she didn't need to Terra here if she's Scarfed. Okay, she is Dazzling Gleam. Okay. So she's going to take out the Zoroark. So she is Choice Scarf, that means. Unless I miscalc my speed. Um, I actually want to double check that. I'm pretty certain I calc this right. But I want to look. We should be... Yeah, 338. This thing's max speed is 337. I remember calcing for that. So we are out speeding. This thing is Choice Scarf guaranteed, which means it's locked into a fairy type move, which means Mage next puts in work here. So I should be able to just swap this in. I could actually go for Mr. Aloha and go for like a Flare Blitz. Nah, Machen's a safer play, I think. Because she's going to swap, right? Because if I go Mr. Aloha and Flare Blitz, she just swapped in Slow King. Where if I go Machen... She's going to switch out, but I could Rapid Spin and get rid of the rocks. And I don't think she has another Hazard Setter on the team, because Mudsdale is now gone. 
which means I don't have to deal with stealth rocks for the remainder of the game. That's actually pretty huge. I switch in Mage and I'm just going to rapid spin here. The Iron Head seems enticing. Yeah, but she's going to switch out. I, I kind of figured this was going to happen. She's not going to stay in choice locked on a Dazzling Gleam against Iron Thread. So she goes Brains. That is Slow King. So going to take, yes, Stealth Rock Chip. So it's not Heavy Duty Boots. We're going to rapid spin. Not going to do much damage, but that's okay. We get rid of the rocks, which is huge, which means we have Stealth Rock Advantage for the rest of the game unless she defogs with Corviknight. And now here, kind of want to go Mr. Aloha. I feel like she's going to go Chili Reception and try and switch into something. If she scalds, is that an issue? She goes for a water attack. Is that an issue? I need to keep Machen healthy because I want to be able to switch into the Terra Fairy Delphox. I mean, it also, it, it could have a fire type attack to be fair, but I kind of want to lean Mr. Aloha here because it's going to outspeed this Slow King. If Slow King goes for Chili Reception and switches into something, we should be able to take any one hit and then hit back with either a Flare Blitz or a knockoff really hard. Yeah, I'm going to swap here. I'm hoping just to not see a Water Attack. If I see a Water Attack, that's a bit rough, but at least we can do a chunk of damage in return. So I'm hoping to see Chili Reception. It's a Scald. Okay, that's pretty good damage. Does that tell us anything? So this thing might have a little special attack investment, but it doesn't have much. Knockoff would kill this thing right here, but I think U-Turn is a good in-between play, right? Because if she switches out, I may not want the knockoff. U-Turn will at least give me momentum. She does stay in. Knockoff would have killed. That still does a ton of damage because it's super effective, but that's a bit unfortunate. And if she does go Chili Reception here, this kind of sucks because she gets momentum. Now, how do I want to play this? I think I have to go Meeple here, right? Because I can't take the Scald on Greatestness. I can't take the Risk. If she did click Scald again, if she just Scalded again. But then again, she didn't know we're uh, offensive choice ban. She probably expected to live any one hit. I think Meeple's the play, though. If she Scalds, it's not much damage at all. And honestly, Meeple looks really good for the end of this game. Because I don't think there's much she can do about it to, like, get through it. With Moonlight and Toxic and all that. Does go for Chili. Um, so that's a bit unfortunate. I could see her going Delphox to Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam, but honestly, we should eat that pretty well. We're really bulky. She could also go to Corviknight and try and just like set up on us, but if she does, then we can always just roar it out. It's unfortunate we took that chunk on Incineroar. That was a good play by her, just going for the Scald instead of the Chili. But I think Meeple is in a position to put in a lot of work. Um, and honestly, with the Mons remaining in the back, it goes Diversion. This is, again, this is Choice Scarf. Um, Delphox, how well do we take a Dazzling Gleam? Okay, so Meeple is an absolute monster. Even if she goes for Dazzling Gleam, I mean, she can't set up because she's Choice Scarf, right? So even if she goes for Dazzling Gleam again, this only does about 50%. I'm just gonna click Moonlight, I think, because we would recover basically all the damage that she would do. Oh, she goes for Trick. That's rough. That's a really good play. That's a really good play. What do we get? Or we got the Choice Scarf. Okay, yeah. Um, That's a problem. That's a really big problem. What do I do now? Man, would she be ballsy enough to go like Calm Mind on a Stealth and on a Choice Scarf user if she tricks it away then to Calm Mind up? That would be a hell of a set. I don't think she'd run that. That would be crazy. That would be just like a goaded friggin' set. I don't want to stay in on Meeple now that she's now that I'm Choice Scarf, because I'm locked into Moonlight. So literally all I can do is heal until I switch back out. Damn, that trick is brutal. I honestly thought I was in a position where I almost couldn't lose this game, and now I'm wondering how I can even win. <laughs> um, This is going to be really hard because of that trick. I don't think I can gamble with the greatestness. I think I have to go Mr. Aloha here. Curious to see what she goes for. If she switches, that's best case. She does switch. Wow. And she's faster than us, even though we're Choice Scarf. That's actually hilarious. That's because we are not a very fast Umbreon. She goes Hacker. Is this Booster Energy? That's what I want to see. It's not Heavy Duty Boots. It is not Booster. Which means if we get a plus one, like a Dragon Dance, Iron Thorns, we will outspeed everything, which is good. Right? So if we're plus one, we outspeed everything. We'd outspeed Corviknight. Because I can't imagine she'd run Choice Scarf Corviknight. Yeah, that wouldn't even matter. We'd still be faster. Now that she's not Scarf, that is the one positive. Because Iron Thorns will outspeed everything after a plus one boost. But what the hell do we do against this thing? It probably just goes for an Earth Power. But I don't think I can risk the switch into anything else. I think I just have to attack. And if it goes for Earth Power, then it sucks. But I just Flare Blitz and try and hit something really hard. Because there's nothing else I can really switch into right now. 
I don't want to switch an Ombreon right now because I'm going to need it. Yeah, the Earth Power comes out. That's unfortunate. Um, So now I'm really regretting not clicking Knock Off instead of U-Turn with Incineroar earlier, but that was just a... That was a hell of a call by her. So she's up 4v3. How in the world am I going to get through this? This is brutal. Meeple being choice scarfed is absolutely, in the words of Shady Penguin, a dagger. How much damage do I take if I Terra Fairy? I take too much damage if I go, even if I go Terra Fairy on Iron Thorns, I take too much damage. Because I think I need to get pl to plus two to sweep. If I only go plus one, I don't think I can sweep. I think I have to go Meeple here and just maybe click... Foul play, maybe? Because I would Toxic, but if she goes Corviknight, then that then I'm stuck into Toxic against a Steel type. Foul play is really the only thing that does damage right now. This is really hard. I, honest to God, I don't know how we're going to get through this. We need, like, the absolute perfect opportunity for Iron Thorns, because we need to, I think, get the plus two to win. Actually, that's not true. If we come in with booster energy and plus one, we can win. That is Reflect, though. Um, wow, that makes this game even harder. That does literally nothing. No ends. Would this thing be light clay? It's a screener Sandy Shocks. Man, that is such a great bring. Fidel's got good prep this week. Honestly, if I didn't have that sash on Zororic, I think I'd be getting absolutely clapped right now. Do I literally just stay in and foul play again? I guess. So she switches. Is she gonna go Corviknight now? Yeah, get away as Corviknight. Yep. It's not heavy duty boots, so it takes Dolph Rock Chip. That is the only thing that I've really got going for myself right now is that I've got Stealth Rocks. The foul play just tickles, especially behind the Reflect. I think I have to go Machin here to resist this. Now that I think about it, maybe if I go Machin and this thing goes Iron Defense Body Press, I think I lose the game. Like the only way out of that is to Roar Meeple. So I have to switch into something and come back into Meeple. I don't think this thing is going to attack. I think this thing's going to set up. It's not going to attack into Meeple, right? I think my play is literally... I think my play is to go Greatestness here, swap in, and then swap back out into Meeple. This feels so bad because I'm probably going to waste this booster energy because it only lasts while you're in. But I don't think there's a chance in how this thing attacks. And if it goes Brave Bird, then great. If it goes Brave Bird, then we take very little damage. Goes Agility. So I thought it was going to go for setup, but that is not the move I thought it would go for. But now it's faster than my whole team. Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch does not kill. I need plus one. If this thing... I'm swapping Meeple. If this thing isn't physically bulky, there's a chance that with like a roll, we could Thunder Punch KO. But I don't think there's a chance in health. So we're just going to go Meeple here because we need to be able to roar this thing out if it sets up too much. So we're just going to roar here. We're going to get rid of this setup. Does it go for another one? It goes for Roost. Perfect. So we do not take any damage. We are going to reveal the Roar, but this is literally the only thing that's preventing us from losing the game right now. The fact that we can get this thing out so it loses its stat boosts. So what have we seen? We've seen Agility Bulk Up Roost. So I got to imagine it's Agility Bulk Up Roost uh, Body Press. Though I don't know why you would run Bulk Up instead of Iron Defense. We're just going to Roar again. I'm just going to keep the yawn sucks. Okay. I'm just going to keep roaring for now just to get stealth rock chip on everything. The, the problem though is this slow king has regenerator. So every time it comes in, it heals up. Delph box is good. We get more stealth rock chip on this. I would love to keep chipping this thing down with, with hazards. That would be lovely. But now do, am I okay with falling asleep in front of this thing? Not really. Am I? Am I okay with that? I think I, I, I think if I, this is the only thing that like heavily pressures me, right? I'm just going to roar. This is the only thing that offensively like hard pressures me. So if I roar it into something else, especially if it's not Sandy Shocks, we're in good shape. Dazzling Gleam's going to chunk. That does a lot. That does more than 50%. So I miscalced earlier, apparently. But the Roar is going to take it out. Honestly, it's unfortunate, though, because the only thing that takes a lot of damage from this is the Delphox. So we get the Hacker in. Oh, boy. This is a... This is... This is so tough. How many more turns of Reflect do we have? Let me see. There's one turn of Reflect left, and it is out of eight. So it, it's a light play user. This is unfortunate that it actually brought it back in. All right, here's what I think. I'm going to stay in. It has one turn of Reflect left. It's going to go for Earth Power. Yep. We're going to live this, I think. Yep. 
And then next turn, because we are going to be a sleepy Umbreon, it's going to go reflect because the screens are wore off. It's not pressured right now. I, I have to make a ballsy fucking call right now. I have to go Iron Treads. I have to make the ballsy call right now. There's a chance it goes Earth Power and we just lose the game here, but I don't want it to go for a screen in my face. Or I don't want it to... Um, I need to get Meeple in fresh. Goes for Reflex. Let's go. So, now we pressure it with Earthquake. So I think this thing probably switches out. It either switches out or goes into Corviknight. So I'm going to bring in Meeple again in front of the Corviknight. Yep. Oh, and it's faster. Um, so that could have been really bad. <laughs> that could have been really bad. I, I should have known that it was faster, but to be fair, she wouldn't know that it's faster because Iron Treads naturally outspeeds. I'm just not a speedy variant. So Corviknight comes in. Meeple comes in. Do we wake up? Actually, I don't, I don't even know if this counts as a turn of sleep. It doesn't. That sucks, actually. Um, and now we just Moonlight, I think. because it. So what's going to happen is it's either going to set up and we click Moonlight and heal, or it attacks. We stay asleep. That's actually rough. I still haven't seen this thing's attack, but I'm so curious as to what it is. I don't know why you would run bulk up over Iron Defense if it was Body Press, so it's got to be like Brave Bird or something. I'm going to go Moonlight. I'm going to go for the heal instead of the Roar. I need Umbreon healthy. I need Umbreon to be able to take a hit to somehow win this game. So she goes for bulk up. She's going to see... We do wake up. Wonderful. So we're going to heal. So we're going to heal a chunk. And now she knows we're locked into Moonlight. So she's probably going to bulk up again. Yep. And now, here's the deal. If she's body press, then we're in trouble. But I don't think she would be body press with bulk up. She would be iron defense. So now we're going to heal the full. We're locked in, so we can't roar. So we need to go iron treads here. We go Iron Treads here. She might bulk up again. If she is Brave Bird, I think we still take this hit. So she bulks up again. Now she's plus three attack, plus three defense. We can't hurt this thing, but I can't switch into Meeple because we could get two shot by Brave Bird. We need to, or whatever attack it has. I don't want to get two shot. Machen, unfortunately, has to be the sacrifice here. So I think I just, like, Iron Head for a tiny bit of damage. It's going to basically do nothing. But my only way to get out of this situation is to roar with Meeple. And I can't switch in Meeple safely because I will get two hit KO'd. So I have to basically sack Machen to make that happen. I don't want to lose Machen, but I kind of have to. I could make a call that she just roosts to get up to, like, full health and go for an EQ or something. I want to switch in Meeple, but it's too risky. If she attacks this turn, I think I just lose. She goes Power Trip. Interesting. So that does a lot of damage. We hang on. I kind of wish we didn't because we didn't really do any damage. Because we didn't do any damage, I could see her. I don't know why I clicked Stealth Rock here. <laughs> I don't know why I clicked Stealth Rock here. I've seen all four of her moves. I was thinking like if she defogged that Stealth Rock would be good, but we've seen all four moves. I knew she couldn't do this. I'm an idiot. She bulks up to plus four. Reflect is now gone, which is good. I'm going to EQ, I think, because if she roosts, then at least we'll do a little damage. But at plus four, it's not going to do much. But at least it would be something because she loses the flying type when she roosts. But I think she's just going to go to plus six. She knows we can't hurt her, right? I could make that call and switch into Meeple, but it's too risky. I unfortunately just have to lose Machen. I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to win this game. This is going to be incredibly difficult. She has four mons left. The only way I win is getting Iron Thorns in when she does not have Reflect Up and not a boosted Carbonite. So I have to lose Machen here. I have to have it die. I have to have Meeple come in and roar and get Iron Thorns in. That's literally my only win con, and even then, that might not work. But that's the only thing I can do that might have a chance. So she doesn't roost, so obviously the EQ doesn't do anything. She might see this as me just, like, giving up. I'm not actually giving up. I'm just... Iron Head does literally, like, one damage. <laughs> like, I'm not exaggerating. Um, I don't know. EQ at least like kind of tickles. I don't, know, I don't think it really matters what I click. This will do more than more than zero, I guess. Maybe the one extra HP will matter. It doesn't matter what I click. She needs to get. She's gonna get to plus six. I'm literally calculating this right now with agility and plus six attack, plus six defense, power trip. So she goes for it. 
Machen's gonna drop. Now we have to bring in Meeple. From what I'm calcing, Meeple lives this hit, which is insane. I don't know how the hell that's possible, but it does. So unless she crits, we should live this power trip, unless I'm calcing this wrong. We get to roar, it will lose the boosts, and then somehow we need to go into Iron Thorns. That's our literally only win condition. So please tell me I calc this right. We do live, like, we took zero from that. That's a max attack power trip, that's so crazy. I mean, I know it's a resisted hit, but that's crazy. Roar comes in, so at least we keep the game going. Sandy shocks. This thing clicks reflect, right? If she gets screens up, I don't know how I win this. I don't think I can win this if she clicks reflect, right? I have to pray that she goes for any other move other than reflect. If she goes for reflect, I think we lose. I just have to roar and hope she goes for something else. She goes for earth power. We're still like a million years away from winning this game, but it is technically still possible, depending on who this switch is in. Woking. Okay. So she's gonna go chili, right? She probably goes chili reception. Would she do that? Because Roar goes after chili reception. Do I go Iron Thorns here? This is a gutsy friggin' play. But I kind of feel like I have to make it. This might be a bad play. If it's Scald, it's a bad play. But I need a moment. I need a moment. And if this thing goes chili reception, then we have a chance. It goes for Yawn. Damn it. Okay. That's a whole nother thing that we have to get around. Um, so we, we have to switch right back into Meeful. I'm hoping this thing just like kills Meeful here. Do I hope that? I think so. Because I just need Iron Thorns to get in on a free switch. Goes for Chilly Reception again. I imagine just goes into Corvin Knight. Um, actually, no, because we've kind of showed that we can wall that. Because we could just Moonlight up or Roar it. So she probably goes... She probably goes Sandy Shocks again, I'm thinking. To get Reflect up. I think she should have clicked Reflect last time. No, that's the Delphox. Why does she go Delphox here? Wait, if, wait, 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 wait. We need this thing to kill us right now. If this thing kills us right now, I think we could win. Legitimately. She does not have screens up. If this thing kills us, we switch into Iron Thorns. We get plus one boost. We can knock it out. I see an angle here. I see an angle here. I don't know which move I want to click, but I need this thing to kill me. If this thing kills me full, I think we can legitimately win this game. Because she didn't set up Reflect. Oh my god. That's actually so good for us. There's like, a, there's actually a chance we could win this. Iron Thorns comes in on a clean switch. Dazzling Gleam should do like 50-ish percent. We get a free Dragon Dance off. She's not Scarfed anymore. We will outspeed. We're going to be plus one. She probably brings in Slow King to yawn this thing to put it to sleep. That might end it for us. Wait, we have Substitute. Does Substitute block Yawn? I need to look this up. Yawn does not go through Substitute. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. If we D-Dance here, she attacks. We kill it. If she brings in Slow King to Yawn to try and clean up the game, we have Substitute. It would block Yawn. We could get a free second D-Dance. It's far from a sure thing, but there is legitimately a chance we can win this. Wow. She swaps. I can't believe that. She swaps right away just to go for the yawn. That's actually... Okay. Actually, that is the exact correct play for her, except for this exact situation because we happen to have substitutes. Oh my god. She, she goes yawn 100% on this next turn, right? Because she tries to put us to sleep. Because if she puts us to sleep, Sandy Shocks comes in and wins the game. Oh my god. This might legitimately work. I thought this game was so over. We might legitimately win this game. Unless this th if this thing gets Roar, then we lose. No, it, it, we don't, because we can't get Roared out. We have nothing else to get Roared out into. Yawn does not work through Substitute. I click Sub here. There's no way she doesn't go for Yawn. If she goes for Scald, then whatever. Then we lost her Sub, and it is what it is. She goes for Yawn 100%. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. We get a second Dragon Dance off for free here. We don't fall asleep, we get a second D-Dance off. 
she probably breaks a sub with Skull, but we're plus two speed, plus two attack. There is no priority on the enemy team. I think legitimately we can win this game. Goes for Scald. As long as we don't get a burn. I don't know if we can get burnt through Substitute. Please, please, for the love of God, tell me we don't get burnt. That can't happen, right? Okay, no. Oh my god, if we got burnt, I think we would have lost. There's no way in hell plus two th Thunder Punch doesn't kill, right? Super effective. I know Slow King is bulky as shit. Am I calking something wrong? How does this not kill? This thing is not... It's not unaware. It's got Regenerator. Why is plus two not killing? What am I doing wrong here? There's no way this thing is this bulky. What am I, what do I have calc wrong? There's there's no way. Oh my god, I have reflect on the calc. That is why. I was calcing the whole time thinking she has reflect up. That's why. Thunder Punch kills. I think we just won the game. No effing way. I think we just won the game. There's no way anything lives. Corviknight at max HP defense will die to a Thunder Punch. Terror Blast kills. Terror Blast kills Sandy Shocks at plus two. Terrorblast kills Delphox. I think we legitimately just won this game. No effing way. How did we how did we win this? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count my chickens. I'm gonna very carefully click the correct button. If I click the wrong button, I could lose. I don't know how this happened. I think if she clicked reflect when she had Sandy Shocks out, I think we lost. I think we got insanely lucky on that turn. She is a really good player. She I feel like she honestly outplayed me for a good chunk of this game. Um, but I think not clicking reflect was a big mistake. She's thinking really hard right now. I, I don't think there's a play that she can make. She's not red card on anything. She's already revealed every single Mon because everything is chipped. Um, actually, that's not true. We haven't hit. No, Sandy Shocks is like play. We know that. She's going to bring in the hacker. It's going to take a tiny bit of stealth rock chip. There's no way this thing dies or doesn't die to Terra Blast. So I'm going to be very clear, careful to click that instead of Thunder Punch. This should be another KO. How the hell did we pull this off? Freaking greatestness, man. You got to be kidding me. Had 11 kills coming in this week. I think is about to run this four kill sweep at the end. I don't think I had any business winning this game. Maybe I played better than I'm giving myself credit for. Honestly, like, I feel like we could have pretty cleanly won this game, but the Choice Scarf trick by her was so good. The Delphox trick onto Meeple was so good because... You could see, like, how hard we were walling this team. Like, Meeple would have put in so much work. Terror Blast comes out, though. This should be a kill. This should 100% be a kill. That's another one down. Corviknight dies to Thunder Punch. And Delphox dies to either attack. What the hell? Dude, Greatestness can't keep getting away with this. This is Iron Thorns, man. I... It, this is so cool because Iron Thorns is a Pokemon that never sees play, like, anywhere else. Legitimately, like, the people who don't play a ton of Pokemon and watch my videos are going to look at this thing and be like, dude, this thing is so ridiculously good, but I'm telling you, this thing does not see play in any other format. The only reason that it sees play here is because other Pokemon can't Terrastalize. Uh, but the fact that this thing can Terra, it's just, a, it's an animal. I can't, I can't believe that this game is so crazy. I don't think I've ever won a game this close either. This actually feels really good to somehow pull this off because I always lose the close ones. Every time I win, it feels like... I'm going to Thunder Punch here. Every time I win, it's a 3-0 or better. Legitimately, I don't think I've won. I could be mistaken. Thunder Punch kills again. I think other than this game, every single win I've gotten in Draft League has been a 3-0 or better, which sounds crazy. But that just tells me, like, I'm good when I'm ahead. But I haven't been able to close out the close ones. Close ones. So the fact that I somehow found a way in on this game honestly feels really good. This is the last mon. Um, I'm going to shoot a GG to Padel. And we're going to click Terra Blast, because why not? The fairy kills the fairy. This should be game over. Um, wow. Unreal. I don't know what just happened, guys, but I'm really happy for it. And uh, I'm here for it. Shout out to Bedell, amazing player. She's got a really good team, a really scary team. I think she had really good prep. The Choice Scarf trick on Delphox was just like, oh my goodness, so damn good. Um, I was not prepared for that. It it felt like it was going to render my Meeple useless, but to be honest, without Meeple, I could not have won this game because the roars were really clutch. I managed to Moonlight back up a couple times. Maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Maybe I did play well. I felt like I didn't because I was down in a 4-1 situation. But honestly, with a Choice Scarfed uh, Umbreon, I don't know how much more I could have done, to be honest. So 
really happy to take this win. That's really, really awesome. But a huge shout out to Padel again for an absolutely fantastic battle. All right, guys, with the battle over and done with, and I don't think I said this in the matchup preview. I actually did the matchup preview and I did this, um, like, what is it now a week and two days after my actual battle? I did my actual battle like nine days ago and I'm doing all of this now. So uh, doing the actual matchup preview, trying to remember what I did for all the sets was actually tricky. I tried to do it all on the same day, but I didn't have time that day. So I only did the battle. Uh, but regardless, these are how things are looking right now. So first of all, I don't actually know for certain. I'm pretty confident that the top eight teams in our league make playoffs. And based off of the records right now, ninth place is two and four. We are four and two. I think it is almost guaranteed that we have already clinched a playoff spot because our differential is also very very strong however one more win will for sure guarantee us a playoff spot so ultimately in the next three weeks we are really trying to get one more win and honestly for me uh, just for pride and for standings, I want to try and get to the top if at all possible. So we'll see if we can keep moving up. But ultimately, we're still in fourth place. We've been stuck there for a few weeks now. Four and two record, though, plus 10 differential and ultimately looking pretty good. Um, I also want to say shout out to Padel for an absolutely phenomenal fight. That was insanely close. I honestly feel like she outplayed me in that battle. And I feel like because I just got one free turn, I happened to make that work and kind of got built out by the Iron Thorns. So that is how good Iron Thorns is, though, and that's why it is the greatest -ness, as they are the 15 kill kill leader in the league, which is just absolutely absurd. Averaging almost four kills per game that it shows up to is absolutely cracked. That should never happen, uh, but we're popping off with it and I am not mad about it whatsoever. But looking at some of the mods up the top, five games played, Guesswork, Machen, and Kayuma. Four games played with the greatest -ness, Mr. Aloha and Jesus. Two weeks in a row, I didn't bring the Dragapult, which feels very, very strange. But honestly, for me, part of it was like a personal thing of like, wanting to see if I can, you know, make the team work without the number one Pokemon in terms of points. Like it's, it's widely considered the best Pokemon in draft league. So if I can pick up wins without it and not basically have to rely on it as a crutch, when I do come into battles down the, you know, down the line, closer to playoffs and stuff like that, uh, I know that I can pull off wins with some of these other mons and then Dragapult can fill its role however it is that week. Um, and I know that I don't have to rely on it, which is nice. But the Kells, Meeple, both two games played. Harkos and McCrane has won. Chisei the Bulbasaur still have not played one yet. But ultimately, looking at the kills, Guesswork got a couple this week, which was really, really awesome to see. Greatestness is 15, which is insane. We got a handful with three and two here. Ultimately, everybody putting in some work, though, in terms of that win and loss column now, though. And uh, honestly, I really love the team. I really, really like this team. I love what I've kind of put together here. I think we have a lot of really good momentum and pivot around, which ultimately gives us really good opportunities to get our big old sweeper Iron Thorns in. And not even just the Iron Thorns, but I think there are a couple others that will pop off at some point in the season. We just haven't had that uh, opportunity yet. It's just one of those things that's like Terra is so ridiculously broken in this game, in my opinion. It's a really, really strong mechanic. And you have a Pokemon in Iron Thorns that never sees any gameplay in any other mode of Pokemon. And for you guys that don't watch a ton of other Pokemon, you probably don't realize this. Like Iron Thorns just doesn't get play. It doesn't. It's not considered a good Pokemon whatsoever, but when only certain Pokemon can Terra, and you have this thing which is just absolutely juiced in its stats, and its worst thing about it is its type, well now all of a sudden you change the type and now it, it's crazy good. So ultimately I'm really happy that I made that pick earlier in the season. It's been crushing, and uh, ultimately really excited for the next three battles, guys. So thank you guys, as always, so much for watching, and make sure to tune in next week for our battle against the Highland Park Hydreigons coached by the Umbra Guardian, who's actually a brand new coach. Honestly, we're gonna have our work cut out for us that week because uh, it shows a one in four record. I think it's actually a one in five record currently, um, but this is a brand new coach and a brand new team. So that record literally has nothing to do with any of this because none of the Mons that were on that team are, no, are any longer on the team. So it's all gonna be changed. But anyway, that's a talk for next week, guys. And until next time, have a wonderful day.